Hello everyone, what's up? Hope you guys are doing well. Now I'm making a video after, well, quite a lot of months I would say and the reason for being absent was because of, uh, well there were quite a few reasons. First I was on a break, I was on a vacation and uh, I was quite occupied with my online classes and uh, I've noticed that my channel has picked up. Uh, a lot of you are watching my the content that I've been making. I guess it's because of your exams. And I really hope you guys are enjoying and benefiting the same. So I've been getting a lot of requests and quite a lot of topics have been piling up that I've been wanting to make content on. One of them is sets and Venn diagram, of course. I've covered the shading part, but I haven't covered the word problems. And that's what I'm going to do today, inshallah. So, and you must have noticed, I decided to spice up my videos a little just by adding my face. So let me know if you like that. And uh, so yeah, without wasting any time, let's get started. So here we have sets and Venn diagram. Now before I jump into the word problems that I have planned to solve for you guys, I think it's important to understand a bit of the theory of it. So I always suggest my students that whenever they are solving a question that's related to sets and Venn diagram, that you should read the question from the start to the finish so that you can realize how many categories you're dealing with. So most, more than most of the time, there'll be two. So in case there are two, let me show you what happens. So you have, you're gonna have two sets, one for A and the other for B. Now, A could represent anything. It could represent a subject, a sport, anything. Now, it's likely that they will have some elements in common. So the first thing you need to know is that the overlapping region represents the elements that are common in both. So we're gonna say A and B. These are the elements that are present in A and in B. Or if you wanna use certain notation, you can call it A intersection B. This region, the one that I'm highlighting in green represents A only. This means that all the elements that are present in A but not in B. And this region, let me highlight this in blue. This represents the number of elements that are present in set B only. And there are likely to be elements outside of A and B and they are going to be inside the universal set, but neither in A nor in B. So I'll highlight that in orange or whatever this is. So this represents neither, neither A nor B. Okay, so let's see how we can apply this in actual word. Okay, so here's one question that I would like to solve for you guys. It says, in a group of 35 people, 22 are wearing spectacles, 10 are wearing a hat, and 6 are wearing a spectacles and a hat, okay? By drawing a Venn diagram or otherwise, find the number of people who are wearing neither spectacles nor hat. Okay, so now I'm going to read the question again, and I'm going to be highlighting what I think is important. So group of 35 people, this is important. Why? Because now I know the total number of people inside the universal set. 22 are wearing spectacles and 10 are wearing a hat. So this tells me... This tells me something very important is that inside the Venn diagram, I will have two categories. So let's say the circle that you see in green represents the number of people wearing spectacles and the circle in red represents the number of people wearing a hat. Okay. So the number of people wearing spectacles happen to be 22. The number of people wearing a hat happens to be 10. And the question has been kind enough to tell us that the number of people who are wearing both spectacles and hat happens to be six. So with the help of this, there are two things that I can work out. The first thing that I can work out is that the number of people who are wearing just spectacles is going to be 22 minus six. Why? Because 22 is the total for, uh, is the total number of people who are wearing spectacles. And out of these 22, six are wearing a hat. So that means if I subtract six, from 22, I get what? I get the number of people who are wearing spectacles only, which is going to be 16. Yeah, it's going to be 16. Okay. And if I want to figure out the number of people who are wearing just a hat, I can do it the exact same way. I can subtract 6 from 10. So 10 minus 6 equals to 4. Okay. Now, let's see what the question is asking for. The question is asking for, by drawing a Venn diagram, or otherwise, find the number of people who are wearing neither spectacles nor a hat. That means the question wants us to find out the number of people who are, by the way, the total number of people inside the universal set is going to be 35. I should have written this earlier. Okay, so that means the total number of people, which includes spectacles, hat, both, 
and the number of people who are wearing neither it happens to be 35. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to individually sum them up and set that equal to 35. That's it. So 16 plus 6 plus 4 plus x equals to 35. Okay, let's solve this. 16 plus 6 is 22. 22 plus 4 is 26. 26 plus 6 equals to 35. So x equals to 35 minus 26, which is equal to 9. Let me just double check. 16 plus 6 is 22. 22 plus 4 is 26. 26 plus x equals to 35. x equals to 35 minus 26, which is in fact equal to 9. Okay, so this may not be enough. Let's solve a couple of more questions. Okay, so here we have question number 6 of, uh, I don't remember exactly what year, but yeah, it's important nevertheless. So we have a universal set which contains x such that x is an integer and x is greater than or equal to 10, lesser than or equal to 20. So it's always best to list down the elements inside the universal set. So it's going to, I mean, they're going to start at 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, so A is a set which contains all the odd numbers. So let's write down the elements of set A in red. So we're going to have 11, 13, 15, 17, 19. B is a set which contains all the multiples of 5. So we're going to have what? 10, 15, and 20. That's it. Now find out the number of elements that are... Okay, now here we have to write down the number of elements, okay? So if I, if the question had asked to write down A into section B, we would just simply look for the common elements, which happen to be 15. But if the question wants us to write down the number of elements, then it's just one. So one is our final answer. Okay, now it says A complement union B. Okay, so how can I write down A complement? Well, A is a set which contains all the odd numbers. So complement of A would be everything except for the odd, everything inside the universal set, which is not in set A. So that means we're going to have, we're going to have 10, we're going to have 12, we're going to have 14, we're going to have 16, 18, and 20, basically all the even numbers. And in B, we're going to have what? 10, 15, and 20. Okay, now we need to find the union of these two sets. So that means we're just going to list them. So we're going to have 10, 12, 14, 15, 16, 18, and 20. Okay, so this right here is your final answer. I'll just, in fact, let's just let it be. Okay, now the question says a number r is chosen at random from the universal set. So that means the total number of outcomes are going to be 11. Since 10 to 20, if you count inclusively, we have a total of 11 numbers. So it's always best to write that down from the get go. Find the probability that r is an element of, that means it belongs to the set A union B. So let's just quickly work out A union B. That means we're going to merge these two sets. Sorry, not this one. This and this. So let's merge them quickly. So we'll have 10, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, and 20. Let me see if I haven't missed anything. 10, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, 20. Yeah. So how many uh, elements do we have that are favorable? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have seven favorable and 11 is the total. So seven over 11 will be our final answer. Okay, so here's another word problem and also the last one. No, not the last one. Okay, we have one more to go. Okay, so we have the universal sets and P is a set which contains X such that X is an even number. So let's write down all the even numbers that belong to this set. So we'll have 84. 86, 88, 90, 92, 94, 96. Q contains all the multiples of 3. Okay, so it's going to take some take a while. 84 is a multiple of 3. 85 is not a multiple of 3. 86 is not a multiple of 3. 87 is definitely a multiple of 3. So if, it's, if we start at 84, we can, uh, can simply move 3 places to get the next multiple. 87, and then we'll have 90, and then 93 and then 96 okay B union Q okay let's work that out no big deal 84 86 87 88 90 92 93 94 96 but this is not the final answer we're supposed to write down the number of elements we have so we have one two three four five six seven eight nine so we have nine elements 
given that y is a set uh, y uh, belongs to the universal set and y is a prime number write down the value of y okay so how many prime numbers do we have here 84 is definitely not a prime number 85 is a multiple of 5 86 is an even number 87 is a multiple of 3 88 is an even number 89 hmm this looks good okay so let's just be sure 90 even 91 hmm 91 is a multiple of 7. Okay, so let's cross that out. 92 even, 93 multiple of 3. 94 is a multiple of 2. It's an even number. 95 is a multiple of 5. 96 again, an even number. So that means it has to be 89. Okay, now, in the Venn diagram, shade the region represented by A complement intersection B. I have an entire video on shading. You can watch that. It contains shading of two sets and also three sets. Hopefully, it will help. But I'll just do this anyway. So let's just number all the unique regions. So we have one, two, three, and four. So A complement contains one and four. Set B contains three and four. Now, since we're supposed to shade the common region, the common region here is four. So that means we'll just simply shade four. And that's about it. Okay, let's move to the final question. Okay, so here we have to use set notation to describe the shaded subset in the Venn diagram. Okay, so it's it's sort of like P intersection Q with the exception of R. So that means if it were P intersection Q, it would be the region that I've just highlighted. But we need to exclude the region R. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, we're going to put a bracket here, intersection R complement. So this way, the region, this region, the one that I'm highlighting in green gets excluded and we get exactly what the shaded region is. So let's write this in its appropriate place. P intersection Q, intersection R complement. Okay, now another word problem. Okay, this one's interesting. It says in a group of students, 30 play cricket, 38 play football and nine play neither cricket nor football. Okay. Find the lowest number of students in the group. Okay, so whenever you come across a question like this, what you gotta make sure, where you have to make sure that the total is the least. Okay, so that way, there are two things you can, I mean, there are two ways to think of it. You can either maximize your intersection or you can, through that, you can also minimize your union. Okay, so here's what I mean. 30 play cricket and 38 play football. So I can't make all 38 of them play cricket because it's only 30 that play cricket and 38 play football. What I can do, however, is I can make all 30 of the students who play cricket play football because the number of people who are playing football is greater than the number of people who are playing cricket. So when I'm representing this in a set diagram, this is what I'll do. The larger set obviously belongs to the number of students who play football. So this right here, the set that I've drawn in red is representing the number of people who play football a number of students or whatever. Now I gotta make sure that I make the smaller set the subset of the larger set. So that means out of these 38 students, I'm gonna make 30 play cricket. So that means there are no unique students playing cricket. It's only from these 38 students. I'm gonna make a set inside this. I'm gonna give it to cricket. I'm gonna say, now you 30 people play, play cricket. Okay, so this way what happens? This way, nine play neither cricket nor football, so we can't change that. So through this, we have the lowest number of students in this group. Why? Because football and cricket combined will be equal to 38. Like I said, there are no unique number of students playing cricket. So if I want to figure out the total or the universal set, I'll simply do 38 plus nine, which is equal to what? Which is equal to 47. So I hope through this, uh, the concept of word problems is clear to all of you. This was pending, this was due on me for a very long time, I can't even tell you guys. But I will try to be more regular with making videos and let me know what you guys want to see next. And uh, I'll try and not delay that for too long. But yeah, that's about it. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, take care, bye-bye.